بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of the methodology of the salaf al-salih and the ummah's need for it we reached a portion of the trees where imam fulzan hafizallah ta'ala was mentioning the importance of uh, the madhhab of the salaf and that it is a madhhab that will remain and that its relevance as is implicit in the title of this treatise its relevance is still relevant unlike what some of the other people of bid'a and desires say that we need a new manhaj we need to look you know brother there's nothing wrong with interfaith uh interfaith uh, activities and so forth things that go against the creed of islam and things that distort the principles of al wala wal bara and with that along with that they are promoting a new minhaj a new methodology and in essence they are inferring implicitly that the minhaj of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not sufficient and so this is a very dangerous thing and why it's important to adhere to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa ar rashidin al mahdiin adu alayha bi nawadhij the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said follow my path adhere to my sunnah and that of the rightly guided khulafa and bite on to it or cling to it with your molar teeth Imam Fuzan half of the law ta'ala he said that the methodology of the salaf is appropriate for every time and place it is light from Allah the almighty so do not be deceived by the speech of the deceiver and the deviant do not allow them to divert you and then he mentioned a very powerful and profound statement by Imam Malik rahmatul alayhi rahmatan wasiya who said la yasla akhir hadhihi al umma illa ma aslaha awwalaha imam malik said that the umma the latter part of this nation will not be rectified except for what rectified the first of it meaning the original meaning the salaf as salih so that right there is an affirmation of the minhaj of the salaf not just an affirmation of the minhaj of the salaf but it's an affirmation that the minhaj of the salaf is relevant through all times that no matter the complexities that we face and we have to re- we have to be real and honest with ourselves that the times are very complex and we face new shabaha shubahat and new shahwat to a, a high level and bikathra you know by it, it, it's a tremendous amount of challenges that we face and likewise the reality of our lifestyles and the re- reality of many things the reality of uh, the muslim lands is very different than even in the time of the salaf and likewise the re- many uh, realities that we face as far as how we have to live our daily lives is very very complex and we have to realize and acknowledge that however with that being said we don't abandon this minhaj this minhaj will in- will cover it why because we need ulama who understand the minhaj and methodology of the salaf who can take that then in turn look at the reality of our new situations and new realities in which we face and new boundaries and borders and uh technologies that we face and they can apply from that minhaj they can look to that minhaj with ilm wa fiqh wa basira whereas us whether it be someone who's a small student of knowledge or someone who's just uh just one of the general muslims or whatever the case may be we don't really have those tools so although we may say well these new complex realities i think i'm going to practice this i'm going to think i'm going to do this but because we have limited knowledge of kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the salaf as ummah and the tarikh the history of islam and the other sciences of islam then we're not ahlan we are not people who have the right to 
adjudicate uh, and make uh, rulings and fatawa. But rather we refer to the ulama and this shows for us the importance of the ulama and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasal ahli dhikrin in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you uh, if you do if you don't know. So we are ordered by Allah to return to Ahl al-Dhikr. Then the Shaykh said, what corrected the earlier nation? So he asked uh, a rhetorical question. What corrected the earlier nation? The Quran and the Sunnah and those who followed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah. This is what rectified the early part of this nation. The latter part of it will not be rectified except with what the earlier part was corrected with. Consequently, it is upon the person who wants salvation to learn the way of the Salaf, hold firmly to it, and propagate it. This is the path of salvation. It is the Ark of Nur. Whoever boards it will be saved. Whoever forsakes it will be drowned in deviation. Thus, there is no rescue except by way of the methodology of the Salaf. And there is no way for us to know their methodology except by learning. Ilm. This is why we emphasize Talib al-Ilm. Because some of the people, they cut and paste from the internet. They go to these various Islamic forums and they try to build their whole religion from that. No, ikhwana fillah. You have to seek ilm and nafiyah. You have to go back to kitabi Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf by sitting with the ulama. You have to sit in the ulama or the institutions where the, the ulama's books are being taught or seek knowledge from tulab al-ilm that you trust that have the knowledge and tools and who have sat with the ulama to, in order to gain that benefit, in order to filter that knowledge and filter and distinguish haq uh, wa batal to distinguish between the two. Because if we leave it up to ourselves, as the Salaf used to say, about the person who relied only on their books, they used to say, uh, that whoever takes their knowledge from the books is misguided. So what does this mean? We shouldn't read la. That's not what it means. Does it mean that the person who reads is misguided? La. That's not what it means. But what it means, Ikhwan Fillah, is that the person who relies and who has access to the scholars and who has access to the telephone and to the uh, internet to where they can listen and benefit from those ulama, that, that if they rely only on that instead of seeking knowledge with the ulama and then they're making fatawa and they're making rulings and judgments for the people to follow, then this is uh, the, the path of misguidance. This is a very dangerous thing. But that does not diminish or belittle our students and our brothers who have not had the chance to sit with the ulama but who are teaching, as long as they know the extent of their ability. And so this is very important when it comes to teaching for all of us, even those who have studied, and depending on the level of study, is know your level. We're not all on the same level. Some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. Maybe two people have went away to study, one for five years, one for 15 years. And the one for five years has more knowledge than one for 15, because he memorized more and he, his, he was more sincere, and he had less sins. Whatever the case may be, the point being, ikhwan fillah, is be watchful of who you take your knowledge from and know that everyone is not on the same level in their, their knowledge, in their understanding, in their fiqh. The ulama are not on the same level. You have some mashaykh that their specialty is more aqidah, but in fiqh they're not as strong. Likewise, you have some that are in fiqh very strong and they might have some naqs in some abwab, intricate details in aqidah. Or then you have those ulama rasikhun fil ilm, those uh, mountains of knowledge that are well rounded in many, if not most, of the Islamic sciences. <coughs> and so this is the case is that not everyone is on the same level, and we have to understand and acknowledge that. But what it's upon what, what it, it is an obligation for us is to seek knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Talib al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim, muslim wa muslima. That seeking knowledge is a, uh, an obligation upon every Muslim man and Muslim woman. Why? So that way we know the madhab of the salaf. So we can practice, we can come closer to Allah. We come closer to Allah by ilm. Wa tatbiqa hadha ilm. We come closer to Allah by knowledge and practicing that knowledge. So the Shaykh had uh, mentioned the importance of knowledge and that you can only 
adhere to this madhab correctly by ilm, uh, by knowledge. And then he said, we should study it and teach it. And at the same time, we should ask Allah, surat al-mustaqim. Surat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. Guide us to the straight path. The path of those whom you've blessed. And this is something important I want to mention, Habitatullah, is that always be humble. Always be humble and may Allah forgive us for in any way being arrogant. That sometimes someone is just a new Muslim and you might gain a benefit, a faida from them. And you may have studied. So we should always have our hearts and our minds open. This is a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters that be humble because you don't know, you could, be, you could have some mistakes that you're even unaware of. You could have some ways in which you have deviated that you're unaware of. So, اِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, please guide us to your sarat, to your, your, your straight path. We need Allah and never abandon Allah. It's not about how much knowledge that you've acquired, but if you need to practice that knowledge. You need to exhibit that, that knowledge. As uh, the ulama say, al amal thamrat al ilm. That knowledge, uh, that uh, um, practice or deeds are the effect or the result of knowledge. Al ilm, al amal thamrat al ilm. Practice is the result or is the fruit of knowledge. Those are the fruits of knowledge. So therefore, Ahabatifillah, you will find people who have some knowledge, they're practicing, they sound good on the, on the minbar, they sound good in the, in the lectures you listen to, but their practice is weak. You don't know what they do at night, you don't know what they do, We've, they're at the club, they're doing this, they're doing this, and they have knowledge. So don't be stunned by this. But understand that all of us need, we need uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. And the Shaykh said, we should continually, continuously ask Allah to allow us to traverse this path and to rain, remain firm on it. This is mandatory. The affair is not that we merely ascribe to this methodology and claim to follow it. A claim void of proof is invalid. The affair is not that we merely ascribe. This is because Allah stated, And also those who follow them exactly in faith. This is very important, Habitifillah. So the Shaykh gives the meaning, so this is uh, uh, beautiful. He said, meaning, they followed them with perfection. Who did they follow? They followed the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, and those, and the Salaf. And one cannot perfect the way of the Salaf except with knowledge of their methodology and one cannot hold firm to it except that he is patient upon it. One must not listen to the false deviant claims which seek to divert you from the path. Indeed, this is the correct path, the path of salvation. All of the other paths will lead you to the hellfire except one. The companions ask which path is that? Which path is saved, O Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he replied, those who are upon what I am upon and my companions are upon today. This is the way of the Salaf, this is the way of salvation, which will lead to paradise. There is no other path, and every other path is astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala subul fatafarraka bikum an sabilihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. So you have to follow the minhaj of the salaf. And I think we're in agreement of this. Anyone who's listening to this <coughs> will agree. We have to follow the minhaj of the salaf. But where we have issues is sometimes when someone claims to be salafi or claims to be calling to the minhaj of the salaf, and we don't have the tools to be able to distinguish whether they are truly indeed calling to the madhab of the salaf or not. And this is why we have to seek knowledge. We have to continue to strive to better yourself because it is confusing. It is confusing. And it's more confusing when you have conflict between your Salafi brothers. This is why my advice to myself and my brothers and sisters on the Dawah, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, or who claim to be on the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, is to leave Hizbiya off. That we leave to we need to leave the characteristics of Hizbiya and cult like behavior. We cannot claim that we are saved like the Christians do. You cannot claim that it's you and your friends that are the only ones guided, but rather be humble. 
Because you, I, I, I don't see this with the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And if you listen to the tapes, especially those mountains of knowledge, those who, who preceded us, and who many of our scholars today are students of, you definitely don't hear that from them. You don't hear Bin Uthaymeen calling to himself. You didn't hear Bin Baz calling to himself. You didn't hear Imam al-Albani calling to himself. You didn't hear Imam Muqbil calling to himself. SubhanAllah, they were amazing ulama. And when you listen and understand and benefit from them, you, you will see. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And with that being said, I'll stop there and we'll continue on in the next lesson. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.